Well, hello there. So originally I was planning this elaborate introduction to this video, but it just kind of felt off because this is a more personal topic and I was starting to feel like I was talking at you guys instead of to you guys. So I decide let's just ax it and I'm gonna bring you guys along with me while we hang out for the afternoon instead. So first off, I'm heading to a new coffee shop in the neighborhood that I've been meaning to try. I got a sampler set and it's really cute, so I'm gonna have to show you guys real quick before I get started. So I guess to start off, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself and my background and why I'm talking about this in the first place because it's not really something I've ever gotten into on this channel. To kind of set the stage, I actually grew up in a smaller city in Central California and it was not really the most diverse place to say the least. I was also born in the early 90s and that was definitely still a time in the US where being Asian was not really a cool thing. I felt like you were automatically assumed to be nerdy. I think on top of that, it just generally didn't help that I was quite small and scrawny to begin with. And I also had and do have really poor hand-eye coordination, so I wasn't good at sports. And I was also very introverted. And remember, this is all against the backdrop of growing up in the US, where the culture is one that values extroversion and athleticism. Two things I definitely did not have, so as you can imagine, I was very popular and very cool growing up. If you can't tell, I'm definitely being sarcastic. Anyways, with all of that for context, I was reminded somewhat recently of a pretty vivid memory I have that took place when I was 13, and it's something I've turned over in my mind a fair bit over the years. 13 is like peak awkward teenager, right? Especially if you also have braces and glasses, which I did then. I'll see if I can find a photo for reference and I'll throw it up on the screen now if I can. Anyways, what happened was that I was out at a dinner one night with family and family friends and I was being compared to the family friend's daughter who is the same age as me and in the same grade. She happened to be doing much better academically than me at the time. I actually had quite a hard time in middle school, but that's a story for another time. And she also physically looked several years older than me. When we went home after dinner, the phrase used to then describe me was late bloomer. To be honest, I don't think I even really understood exactly what that meant at the time just that there was obviously some kind of negative connotation because the word late was used, which by definition is implying that you are behind schedule or later than expected in terms of timing. I think the important thing and the point now that 18 years have passed and obviously a lot has changed is not dwelling on that specific incident, but rather stepping back and thinking and questioning where those expectations come from and why and how they may or may not be doing anything for us. I'm going to finish up my coffee first and then we can go move somewhere else, which is hopefully less noisy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so got my donuts. Got a... don't know if you can see. Got one old-fashioned and one original glaze. I like to keep it basic. And I'm in Hong Kong Park, which is a place that I actually used to take walks in a lot during my lunchtime breaks. I kind of want to try a bite before we get started. Okay, so now I want to move on to talk a little bit about society's fixation with early achievement. I think it's pretty trite that we as a society love and celebrate prodigies and early achievers. I mean, just look at all those magazine lists like Forbes or Times, like 30 under 30, 40 under 40. I think it's pretty evident even in the way we talk about achievement to each other in a way that attributes significance to youth. Like, oh, did you hear so-and-so sold their first company or won their first Pulitzer or whatever by age 23? Obviously, there's nothing wrong with being an early achiever. And I also recognize that there is a degree of relativity in that what might be late or early to one person won't be to another. Back to my situation. Fast forward a few years, I'm 17, I'm marginally less awkward and uncool, I like to think, and I am doing better at school. Specifically, I'm doing my college applications and I spent the last few years trying to max out my grades and my SAT scores and whatnot for that purpose. I mostly applied to colleges in the US for my undergrad, but I also applied to a couple of undergrad law programs overseas in Hong Kong and the UK. After I got into the undergrad law program that I eventually attended, I remember expressing my doubts as to whether I wanted to go to law school at all. 
And I remember the question directed back at me was, well, what else would you do? And I mean, fair question, right? Because I'm 17, I really don't know anything due to lack of time spent on this earth. And to boot, my prefrontal cortex, which is the part of your brain responsible for decision-making and planning and moderating behavior, is literally not finished developing until your mid-20s. So yeah, I didn't know, but as a member of modern society and also being from an Asian household, the logic was like pretty linear in the sense that getting a law degree is a good achievement, so getting a law degree earlier must be an even better achievement. So I really want to try the other donut really quick. Original Glaze is actually like my favorite of all time. Sorry, I ended up helping that family take a photo. Where was I? Oh yeah, so off I went to law school and I was not an exceptional student by any means. In retrospect, I really don't think I was mature enough for law school at the time and I definitely still didn't know what I wanted. However, I was highly aware of the things that I should want, which was to get a training contract at the biggest and or most reputable law firms in town as my first job out of school, which I did not. At the time, that didn't feel good to be honest because I felt like I was falling short of some kind of expectation, but I also didn't really know exactly what that was at the time in the bigger picture sense. Looking back now though, I can recognize it, which is a narrative that we as a modern society perpetuate that if you don't get the best grades and get the best degrees from the best schools possible and also get a job at the best or biggest or most influential companies as your first job out of school, that's somehow an indication that you're not likely to achieve more later on. I feel like it's actually kind of strange and nonsensical if you think about it because in your late teens or even your early 20s, your brain isn't even finished maturing, yet you're being measured and assessed by how you do during that period as if that's a reflection of your potential for the rest of your life. The argument made by Rich Colgard, who is a publisher of Forbes, as well as the author of the book Late Bloomers, is that our culture's fixation on early achievement encourages us to ace tests, become specialists, pursue safe and stable and lucrative careers as soon as we can, instead of taking more time to explore more and to acquire a wider range of skills and experience. And as a result, a lot of the times we'll pursue professional excellence over personal fulfillment and lose ourselves in the process. For the record, I don't think that pursuing professional excellence and personal fulfillment are mutually exclusive. I think the issue is when you're pursuing the former and you lose yourself in the process, which is something I personally really relate to. Oh crap, um, the battery's dying and I don't have a spare, so hold on a sec. So I want to bring you guys up here to Victoria Pea Garden, which is one of my favorite places in Hong Kong to show you the view. But unfortunately, the weather's kind of gone south, so I think we're going to need to hang out somewhere else. It's still pretty nice, though, to be fair. Okay, so where was I? Oh, right, law school. I finished law school the summer that I turned 23, and a couple months after that, I started working my first job at a law firm. And to be honest, I'm not feeling any less lost or like I know what I'm doing or where I want to go. Although maybe you can say a little bit of that can be attributed to lack of experience. And to be fully frank, I don't feel like I'm mature enough at all at that point either. I don't feel like I really started coming into my own, at least in the professional sense, until after I had worked for a couple years, aka after I finished my training contract when I was 25. By this point though, I was like fully immersed in chasing professional excellence, even though like I've mentioned before, I knew pretty early on in law school and in private practice that it didn't really seem like my cup of tea. I didn't know why though at this point, so it made logical sense to keep pursuing professional excellence in a lucrative career because that's what society tells you is good. And eventually I joined a firm which was of the type that I had once aspired to work at as a law student. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't trade my time there for anything because professionally speaking, I think that was definitely the place that pushed me to realize what I was capable of. But at the end of the day, I still couldn't find that personal fulfillment or meaning that I was starting to realize I was lacking. And as you may already know, I ended up leaving private practice when I was 29 after working as a lawyer for over six years for reasons which I've talked about in another video. What I've not talked about though, but which I'm asked somewhat regularly about, is how I deal with feeling behind as a result of quitting and starting over 
at an age or a stage where most of my contemporaries are being promoted to more senior positions? And I guess the simple answer is, I don't feel behind. Definitely once upon a time I would have, but over the years after reflecting on my own experience and my own trajectory and being labeled a late bloomer regardless of whether or not I was one and having taken a bit more time to get into my groove both academically and professionally, I'm quite comfortable and all right with the idea that I will do things and achieve things in my own time at my own pace. I think also growing up quite uncool and not really fitting in made me pretty comfortable with the idea that it's okay to do something different, like different isn't bad, it's just different. I also learned to recognize that these goalposts, which people are using to mark whether or not they're feeling behind or ahead or on time, like being promoted to a certain position by a certain time, may not be for everyone or what everyone wants. And if that's the case, there's no point measuring yourself using those. It might sound a little cheesy, but at the end of the day, you define success and happiness for yourself. and. In the grand scheme of things, life also isn't a race and there's no prize for getting to someplace first. I feel like trying to figure out and get to the right destination is more important than just trying to get to places faster. Life's a pretty long journey, so try to enjoy the process a bit. And yeah, that's basically my two cents on the topic. Thanks for hanging out. Let me know if any of this resonated with you or if you don't agree with anything and I'll catch you guys in the next one.